Even scientists can't tell you exactly why this swarm is happening or what's going on with it, but they do have theories and we're going to have a look at that today. Here at the base of our wall is an Australian stingless beehive. There have been swarms all over my house, not just in this hive, but also in this hive, which isn't a wild hive, and this hive in an old conduit, this hive under my windowsill, and this hive, and this dog that's getting in the shot, out of the shot, and this hive, which isn't a wild one either. And finally, this hive under my kitchen window. This one here has a lot of dead bees around it. So I'm assuming they've had a fighting, hive, a fighting swarm here, but now there's no fighting swarm. And I'm wondering if inside there the invaders have won and perhaps this is a mating swarm let's go through what the different swarms look like and what the theories are behind why these swarms happen over three different episodes we're going to be looking at four different types of swarms in australian dingless bees we're looking at colonizing swarms Fighting swarms, mating swarms, and drift swarms. Scientists now think that it's the tetragonula species that are most likely to swarm. Tetragonula are found in the northern and eastern parts of Australia. And it's in the tropical areas that we tend to find more swarms where Weather conditions over winter don't limit their foraging as much as those in cooler, more southern climates. Colonising swarms. Colonising swarms are made up of bees that are looking for a new site for their colony. They may have outgrown their old hive, like many things with stingless bees. We simply don't know. They move together through the environment and what they're doing is they're looking for tree hollows or man-made structures that mimic tree hollows. Um, so this could include, um, or even natural things that mimic tree hollows. So for example, um, down our creek, there's a big rock wall, natural rock wall, and there are hives in that rock wall where they've obviously found a hollow in amongst the rocks and they've built their hive in there. Um, they also commonly colonise things like meter boxes, which are kind of like a tree hollow. Um, you saw at the beginning of this video that they will take up spaces in walls or window frames. So when they do find a potential site, they actually hover around that potential site for a few days, checking it out. Then if they decide to settle in, they'll start to provision that new site with food if they need to and eventually they'll move in a new virgin queen, a princess, if you like, so that they can start to maintain the colony's population. The other day, I believe I saw one of these colonizing swarms outside one of my captive hives. Now this captive hive started off really well, but I think earlier on this year, it failed to requeen. And what that meant was that when I opened it up to check how it was going, there was lots of food, but there was no brood because they were still foraging and provisioning the hive, but there was no one there to lay eggs. As a result, the hive was really quiet and just kept getting quieter. Obviously, as the bees grew older and died, there was no population to replace them. So when I saw the colonizing, colonizing swarm, I was quite excited because I knew that there was little or no population left in my hive. And so if they chose to move in there, they would make use of all the food that was left, all the pollen and the honey pots. And I would have a new healthy functioning hive. And that's what appears to have happened. There, I didn't see any dead bees, but I don't think there was enough population to create dead bees. I don't think they had to fight very hard. I think they just moved in, which is fantastic. Setting up a new hive is an enormous amount of work. It can involve transferring materials like propolis from the mother hive to the hive that they're starting to create in the area that they're colonizing. 
For this reason, it makes sense that some colonising swarms decide to choose a site that is already populated with other stingless bees. In this way, they can already have the propolis, the honeypots, the pollen, and they can go ahead and start setting up their new population straight away. However, if they do choose to do this, they can create fighting swarms. Well, that's it for today, but don't forget, there's two more episodes coming and we'll look at the other three types of stingless bee swarms. And if you're subscribed, then you'll get a notification. If you haven't subscribed, why not hit that button now so that you can get an update as soon as I upload those videos. And I'll be doing that as soon as I can finish editing them. Thank you so much for your support. If you'd like to show more support for free, please just hit that like button, share this video. If I can get monetized, then I can bring you better quality and more frequent videos. Thanks for your time today. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to find some time to be one with nature and I'll see you next time.